Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so the, the reason for that is that it's, um, this, this item we consulted with this uh, with fees through the annual plan process with all the other fees, um, but because of the timing for the registration <coughs> here for, for both dogs and the health side of things, um, we need to get invoices out and, and registration packs out. So uh, hence a, uh, an item to you today to uh, get a resolution on um, setting the fees. Um, so I'll walk you through the, the, the item. Uh, there was no submissions made um, from the public on the fees for the dog, uh, for the dog fees for the year, uh, and there was one submission that was made by the um, medical officer of health for the um, in relation to the health fees, and that um, that related to the, the costs of the annual registration for a food control plan. So, the food control plans are a voluntary scheme under the proposed legislation, which is um, more of a less of a council going in and checklist approach of are you. Um, meeting the health requirements, more of a um, owner-led approach, and certainly seem, seems to be the way that the legislation's um, going. Unfortunately, that that process has um, resulted in a lot more time for council officers to um, to do undertake the inspections. Um, so, the way that the current funding policy sits is that we have a, a policy of um, funding the inspections directly, so that the registrations are covered by the owner of the business. Um, so we're trying to match the, the fees as they are currently to the likely cost of the, of the inspection and the registration process. Um, so the recommendation from my side of things is that they stay as proposed, which is exactly the same fee-wise as the food hygiene regulations, um, as they both balance out at the end of the day. Um, other than that, there was no, no further submissions made. Um, there's a couple of suggested resolutions on page 8 part 2. Have you taken any questions? Thank you, Mr. Greaves. Any questions, Mr. Greaves? Councillor Body. Uh, how does this procedure take place? Because I notice we have one submission actually asking for some charges to be reduced to get more people on board. Yes. Secondly, on 8 bar 2 under options, discussion of the options, can you explain the um, funding for the animal management being 50% from fees and charges and 50% from the uniform general charge? And the environmental 60 from fees and charges and 40 percent from the general rate are they are those percentages both funded from the general rate and if so why so yes the the funding policy talks about this there's, there's two aspects to take the, the health one is that there's the um, element where the officers go on site and they inspect food premises and there's also the element where um, we respond to complaints, so food hygiene complaints, um, complaints <coughs> about the quality of buildings, quality of premises. Um, so the, the ratio relates to basically direct funding when it relates to a premises inspection and then rate funded for the, the community good element. Just in case I'd note for the councillor, um, that is set through the um, through the long term plan and then place you can change that for the long term plan. So this annual plan you're stuck with those those um, splits. Um, that is something that you can um, can have an account for for next year. It just seems to me wrong that the general rate should be funding some cost of a business. So maybe that's what it should be looked at in the long term. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Williamson. On page um, 8.4, under the environmental health fees, just a clarification with the monthly, the Nibor shop licences and they're being scrubbed, replaced by that $60 fee for the trading public place approval, 60 bucks, is that for a year or just a time to go out or what? That's for the year. So there's, there's two licences. One is um, a food inspection licence to make sure that the premises are safe and the other one is to trade in public place. So that's an approval under the bylaw, um, so providing you meet a particular criteria that you can trade on the side of the road for a period of time. Councillor Buddy? Also, I make 8 bar 4, if you take uh, Mr. Green's comments in regard to the long term plan. Is there a reason that we now have a $60 annual swimming pool inspection fee when that has never been there and we're part way through the first three years of the long term plan? And why would you want to have a charge of $60 annually to inspect swimming pools? 
Um, the re well, the first, first question, I guess, the reason why we haven't is that we haven't been um, very good at undertaking the swimming pool inspections in the past. Um, so we've initiated a program where we've gone through, or well, working our way through, all of the known pools in the district to inspect them to make sure they comply with the Act. Unfortunately, the wording under the current Act is that Council is responsible to ensure compliance at all times. Um, that is proposed to be changed potentially down the, uh, in the future, um, but that's not currently the case. So our thoughts behind an annual fee is that we will have a compliance officer visit the property on a, on a yearly basis to ensure that compliance is still being met. Uh, and if it is, that's the only charge that will be had. And if there's further inspections that are required, they may be charged on from there. Without labouring this point too long, this inspection fee was not included to go out for consultation in the draft annual plan. And it's also been introduced part way through those first three years of a long term plan. If that's where we can alter the way the funding break or the um, charging breakdown is. So I, I, I query why that seems to be a contradiction. This this fee was consulted <coughs> as part of the, the draft annual plan the entire time. It hasn't been inserted. At all, that was what you mean. Councillor Johns. Um, Your Worship, just a point of clarification for a new councillor here. We're in the process of a draft annual plan. We're still in the process of consultation. Yet we've got an item in front of us that we're supposed to be approving outside of that consultation process. Is this really the right process to be following? I appreciate the timing thing, but some of these charges do relate to rates as well. And we do have submission one submission on one of the items. So should we be making passing a resolution now? Um, if I could probably answer that one um, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the only way to avoid that, um, essentially, for the future, is to bring your plan forward. Um, in that these these are unlike your rates bills. These needs to be these, these fees need to be set now to enable the, the bills to be set out in time for the legislation. So it's one of those anomalies in the legislation that. Um, for the nine years I've been here, this council's had to do this process. Um, most councils have to do this process unless they have an earlier annual plan process. But I, I would presume, Mr Green, that there were some changes during our deliberations <laughs> that would then be changed, would they? Um, what we generally do is, um, no they won't, um, so this resolution would, would stand. Um, what we, and that's why we generally try and pull out any submissions that have come out and have this item come after those submissions have been received. Um, so that any changes um, on that would only be based, can be, you know, be based on the submissions that you've received and you've only got one submission in this instance, which Mr Greaves has, has outlined. Um, you, as I said before, you can't change that funding split at this stage, so all you're saying is do you want, um, uh, they're recommending that that particular fee is reduced, um, and so essentially that's the only decision that you, that you can make today, do you reduce that fee? If you do, then the balance of the cost is borne by the general ratepayer, so going more the way that council body talked about before. Um, so the general ratepayer would be picking up more of that, that overall balance, um, and then that would have an impact on your annual plan for deliberations later because we just have to increase the general rate. Okay, and then what would happen then if this particular resolution is tabled? If it was tabled, we wouldn't be able to charge for dogs or health licenses for the next year, so then it would really affect your annual rate. Because it's a general rate, we have to pick up the whole amount. But just to clarify, the council's at risk of breach of procedure? No. No? No. No, there is nothing abnormal about what we're asking you to do here. Um, what we're asking you to do is to bring forward that one submission in terms of this, this very simple matter, this, these fees and make a decision on that, the same process that you've undertaken for at least the last 10 years. Okay, Councillor Stewart. Can you just, because it hinges on that one submission, can you just go through again for me please, what that submission wanted and their reasoning why, so that I can look at this now in a different light? So, so the Minister, uh, the Medical Officer of Health, um, Currently there's two, two systems, and there's the food hygiene regulations, yep. which have been in since 1976, um, which require us to register a premise and then go and turn up and make sure that they comply. And there's a proposal under the, um, under the food bill, which is still before Parliament, where it's more of an audit system so that the operators um, sort out how they're going to operate their business and we come in and we audit that on a, um, on a yearly basis. 
So a very, very similar system, but the onus is more on the operator than it is on the council to tell them what they need to do. Right. Um, and that certainly seems to be the way that the legislation is heading once that changes, and that's before Parliament uh, potentially to be heard this year. Um, what, what we're suggesting is that that process, so the submission um, requests that the fees for the audit are reduced to encourage people to get onto that new scheme because um, they see it as being more proactive for the um, for the operator to be um, ahead of the game rather than waiting for us to tell them how to um, fix their business. Um, but from our practical perspective, uh, on the ground, the inspections take a similar amount of time, if not slightly longer, doing the audit work. So in order to meet our um, our fees uh, requirements and the fees and the funding policy, um, we see it as a same, the same charge. So we like to encourage them in other ways. We encourage them by providing them with a whole lot of information and um, particularly through the um, ministry to get them on board. But because it's not mandated at this point in time and the, the cost to the organ to council is the same as the um, normal inspection process, we believe that the fees should sit as the same fee. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Thanks, Mr. Williams. Uh, all right. Um, I think we sort of understand. Uh, uh, you can assure us that we're not going outside of the process here and um, that, um, and that it won't be a problem. So um, there's a suggested resolution there. <coughs> can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Stewart, seconded by Councillor Pickering. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against? Aye. Uh, can I have a show of hands? Against. Yeah, one against. Okay. Would you like that recorded? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, motion is carried.